Hello fellow coffee botherers, I'm Kev from coffeeblog.co.uk and in this video I'm going to be talking about making cappuccino and other milkies at home without a coffee machine. When I say milkies, by the way, I'm talking about all milk and espresso based coffees, including but not limited to cappuccino. And when I say without a coffee machine, I mean with a very inexpensive manual coffee brewer or even without that and with a very inexpensive option for frothing milk. The traditional way to make milkies is with an espresso machine with a steam wand, such as some of these behind me. If you do want to buy an espresso machine to do this, of course you can do. You don't need to spend the fortune, cheaper sub £200 domestic espresso machines will do it for you, such as a Swan Retro Espresso Machine, for example, and click here for my video on that machine. The DeLonghi Dedica EC685, in my opinion, does a better job, and it's often available for around £150 to £180, and click here for more on that machine. If you really want to get into the home barista hobby though, rather than just getting an espresso machine as means to an end, you'll need a different type of machine. But for more on this, click here to watch the video I've recently done on all of the different kinds of coffee machines. But what if you don't want to spend anything like this on a machine, but you still want milky such as cappuccino, latte and so on at home? Not only is it possible, but it's simple and it can be just about as cheap as you want it to be. So what you're going to need is a way to make the coffee and a way to froth the milk. So let's talk about the coffee first. So if we don't have an espresso machine, we're going to need to find another way to make espresso style coffee. And I say espresso style because if it's not made with an espresso machine, I can't bring myself to call it espresso. But there are ways of making similar concentrated coffees which are close enough for many people once mixed with milk. Personally, I would use a manual brewer for this, but I have to say it, while I wouldn't want to use instant for the espresso part, you certainly can if you want to. If you usually drink instant coffee, and if you want to use instant such as Nescafe Gold, Espresso, Lavazza Instant, Percol Espresso, Nescafe Azera Espresso and so on, they might be fine for you in terms of taste. But personally, and I'm biased because I'm passionate about speciality coffee, I'd recommend brewing fresh using great quality coffee beans. Firstly, for taste. While you might be happy with the taste of instant now, you may be surprised by the huge range of different tastes you can get from different beans when you're using high quality speciality coffee beans. Second, for cost. If you're using some of the instants I've just mentioned, they tend to work out at between two to five pound per 100 grams, which is between five to 12 pounds 50 per 250 gram bag or 20 to 50 pound per kilo for instant coffee. This is the kind of price you'll pay for really high quality speciality coffee beans that have been roasted in the UK by a speciality small batch roaster. So I know what I'd go for given the similar cost. Just a quick point about this. This is quite a big subject. There are so many arguments for speciality coffee versus commodity coffee, including sustainability and traceability. But the one thing I'm gonna say here is that the huge difference between high quality coffee beans you'll buy from UK small batch roasters and commodity coffee beans is variety. You'll notice that most instant coffees are a much of a muchness. There's not much variety in taste. The main difference is simply down to the mix of Arabica and Robusta. Some are blends and some are 100% Arabica. When you start trying different freshly roasted coffee beans though, you'll notice there's a huge variety of flavors depending on the varietal of the coffee plant, origin, processing methods and roast profile. When you're making milkies and you're trying different coffee beans from different roasters, you'll find your milkies taste completely different depending on which coffee beans you're using. You'll never get this kind of variety with instant coffee. So if you're brewing fresh, I think the easiest options are sieve, cafetiere or French press, aeropress or stovetop. I won't go into too much depth here about these brewing methods. I'll do other videos on them. And if you do a quick search on YouTube, you'll find other videos on these brewing methods. But in a nutshell, the sieve method involves putting medium to finely ground coffee at a high coffee to water ratio, I'd say about three to one water to coffee in a cup or bowl with water just off the boil. You leave it for a minute or so, stir it, leave it again for a couple of minutes and then pour through a sieve into your cup. It's not really espresso, but it's not a million miles off either. If you have a cafetiere or French press, you can do the same. The only difference is that you're using the plunger of the cafetiere to separate the grounds from the coffee instead of pouring it through a sieve. 
It's a similar method with AeroPress. Basically, with all these methods, you're just aiming for a concentrated coffee. So if you try it and it's too weak, just use a higher ratio of coffee to water next time. With AeroPress, though, there are some methods you can try to get a bit closer to espresso. And there are quite a few videos on YouTube showing this. But there's no real need to overcomplicate things. We just want to make a concentrated brew with a higher ratio of coffee to water than we would if we were trying to make filter coffee, for example. With stovetop, you literally just use them as they're made to be used. The stovetops are designed to make espresso style coffee. A few quick tips though for stovetop. Start with hot water, as there's a shorter heating time then and less time for the coffee to end up tasting bitter. And stop brewing literally as soon as it starts making the gurgling sound at the end of the brew and run the pot under cold water at that point. So that's the coffee covered. And by the way, I'll put links to these brewers in the description below. So now to talk about the milk. There are loads of different milk frothers you can buy and I'll do another video on these. But in the meantime, see coffeeblog.co.uk forward slash milk frothers. Some of these heat and froth the milk for you at the same time. But in this video, I'm focusing on the very cheapest methods. So I'm going to use two methods, the Bodum Latio milk frother and the Kitchen Craft Lee Express whisk. These little hand whisks have been around for years. You could get them from Ikea for a pound at one point and they simply whisk air into the milk. The Bodum milk frother is basically an adapted cafetiere. You can do this method using a cafetiere, so if you have one, you don't need to buy anything like this. But Bodum have made this slightly different to a cafetiere when it comes to the mesh on the filter. So in theory, it makes it more effective when it comes to frothing the milk. I will actually do a video at some point comparing using the Bodum frother versus cheaper glass cafetieres. In theory, I prefer these manual milk frothing methods to using more expensive electric frothers which froth and heat the milk at the same time for the simple reason that you have more control over the aeration this way. I'm going to heat the milk using a microwave and I'm going to aim for about 65 degrees Celsius. So first of all I'm going to make an espresso style coffee using the sieve method and then I'm going to make a cappuccino with milk frothed with the Bodum milk frother. So we'll pour in with the Brewista Artisan kettle and click here for the review of done of this kettle by the way. And I'm using a little backup scale because I forgot to bring my usual Time More black mirror that I'm using at the moment. What this will do, there we go, it's bubbling or blooming. Give it a quick stir. Pouring now through the strainer or sieve. And just giving it a push with a spoon to get all the coffee out. There we go. Looks like espresso-ish. So starting to pump the frother, the plunger. And as you can see, there's milk coming out because I've not got the lid on properly. And that's because I'm an idiot. I just needed to turn the lid around slightly to cover the spout. That's why that's happening. I did that about 60, 65 times, which I think was a bit too much because the milk is a bit on the stiff side, as you'll see in a sec. So I'd probably do it more like 40 to 50 times next time, but not bad. Next, I'm going to make a cappuccino using the AeroPress and the Lee Express whisk. Again, I'm using the Brewista Artisan Kettle and I'm using the inverted method. The AeroPress is a very versatile brewer. You use it various ways. This is the inverted method. And I found it a little bit easier. Just getting rid of the air. Easy to press like that without the lid on than pressing all the air out after when you've put the lid on in the filter. I'm pressing it into the jug so I can pour it then into the cup. Just because the AeroPress doesn't quite fit onto this cup I'm using. And there we go, no crema, but we've got concentrated coffee, which is what we're after. So I'm starting off with the whisk 
partially break in the surface to pull the air in. And then, when it's starting to look glossy, there's air in there, it's stretched enough. I'm then trying to bury the whisk as I would bury the steam one tip of an espresso machine to stop aerating. I do think I've taken it a little bit too far, so I'd experiment with this and just try and aerate a little bit less because the milk is aerated quite a bit. It's quite stiff, again, as with the Bodum. But it's nice and glossy. It's not bad, it's a little bit on the stiff side. But it's okay. And I'm slightly messing up the latte art because I didn't lift the jug up high enough, but never mind. So there you go. That's how to make cappuccino and other milkies at home without a coffee machine. Thank you very much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, why not click here to watch another one? And don't forget to become an official coffee botherer. You need to click this image around here somewhere to subscribe to our channel and to become an accredited coffee botherer, also known as Patreon supporter. Just go to patreon.com forward slash coffee blog Kev. Tatty bye.